Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So, Pop Pachimon, yeah. it literally translates as something like collage, doesn't it? Hip hop. Um, yeah, I mean, the basic theory is of copying things. So. Great. So, so in, in a lot of your work, you can see these sort of references, and they feel like mixed cultural references, a lot of Japanese. Yep. And then these lovely little quirky drawings and paintings with other kind of Western references yeah. as well. And that's because you're basically Kiwi born. Yeah. And then you've lived in Japan for how long? So I was there for 16 years. Wow. Yeah. And what brought you back to New Zealand? Fukushima. Right. So Fukushima happened and you lived yeah. where? So we're 100 k's away from Fukushima mm -hmm. and two little children. So we thought it was best to come back to Good New idea. Zealand. And now tell me, you live in what you described as a pottery village. Yeah. Now, what is that? So, I mean, it's an old town where they've always had potteries. So there's, I don't know, a couple thousand potters there and just kilns everywhere. The main industry is pottery. Oh, wonderful. So did you intentionally move there? Yes. I mean, I had a fight with my old teacher who lived <laughs> further away in Japan and he was a really famous person, so we had to move far away from him. And that pottery town was quite far away, so... So, so, so there's the pottery rivalry, and then you get... <laughs> yes. Between the towns? Maybe, maybe not between the towns, but there is like a huge rivalry between people. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is pottery so big in Japan? Why is it something so popular? I mean, it's always just been a huge cultural art. It's not a craft, it's an art, a high form of art. And that, that what is it about that in a, a normal domestic Japanese house, for example, yeah. would they have a big range of pottery? Is it an important, is it important part of the fabric of living in a normal I mean, it's domestic? getting to be less, it's more, Japan gets more westernized, mm -hmm. but everybody still does have their collection of pots. And I mean, people who like pots just only buy handmade pots and they're very specific about what they eat on and everything. They just couldn't eat on a white plate. I can't eat on a white plate. It drives me mad. So explain this thing about kintsugi. Have I pronounced that correctly? Kintsugi. Kintsugi. Kintsugi is when you take... Explain kintsugi to me. So I mean, I think they used it to repair broken pots. Mm -hmm. But then in the end, I'm sure somebody was in a shard heap of old pots and started <laughs> jigsawing them together. And then it, that took off. And there's a person in Japan, like a really famous potter, who started doing that. So it's kind of been a revival. Mm -hmm. And now all over the world, just people are going nuts about kintsugi. Because there's something really beautiful about it in that if you break, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you break something that's old or something that yeah. is so that you piece it back together yeah. and it becomes even more cherished um yeah if you're really good at piecing it together <laughs> i mean it's it's a really like art form there and people who are really good at it are just really amazing and they like paint little patterns in it and everything oh beautiful so so, so it's, it's not a case of gluing the thing together you yeah. add something to it so they use lacquer and they mix it with flour Wow. and you glue it together. I mean, a lot of the modern people use putty because that's a lot easier to do. I use putty, but yeah, I mean, the traditional is lacquer and flour. And you've made, for this show, yeah. you know, Vivian, you've probably made about 200 pieces. Yeah. And, but you made them solidly over a period of sort of three... Um, two and a half, three months. So, so how, how, wait, what time do you get up in the morning and what time do you go to bed? Um, so, I mean, I start maybe about eight, nine o'clock, finish about nine, ten o'clock, maybe. When you start the day, do you say, I'm going to make ten sake cups today, or five tea cups, or three bowls? Or what do you, what do, how do you approach the day? I mean, I'm really bad if I make plans for the day. I used to have a visual diary, and I'll do this, oh, that's an amazing idea. And then I'll go into the studio, and I've never made anything I've planned. It's always like, oh, no, I don't like that anymore, and I just make something. 
I just kind of like put clay on the wheel yeah. and take it from there. Well, that's interesting. So explain the steps. So to make something like this large scale pot here, which yeah. is absolutely beautiful. We've got four of these in the show at the Vivian. But to make something like this, just run me really quickly through the process. So you start with the clay. Yeah. What kind of clay? Um, so these ones are porcelain. So what I do is I threw, I think, eight large pots, four porcelain and four stoneware. Mm -hmm. After a, I use coils, I don't throw it in one bit. Mm -hmm. So I throw to about this height yes. and then the next time about that height and, and then the lip. So once that's done, you cut out like say this piece yes. on the porcelain and then you use that as a map for the stoneware and you switch the pieces around. Yeah. So you literally make them and before you fire them, you yeah. cut out pieces from each of the different types yeah. of clay and stick them in each other and yeah. swap them around. Yeah. And is that the is that the, the, the is that the pop patchimon idea of, of hip hop yeah. and changing the sampling different pots yeah. into each other? So you've made the pot, yep. and what happens next? So, I mean, you fire it, of course, the yeah. best firing, and then, I don't know, I mean, you just look at it and decide what decoration you want. I mean, I always have my iPad sitting next to me, mm -hmm. flicking through on Google or Pinterest of, like, old paintings, and then, oh, that, I like that hand or something, and I'll put that there. So when you say old paintings, that's old yeah, Japanese, Japanese paintings. Prints. So yeah. you take references from history as well yeah. and, and cherry pick them. I mean, the way I work and why I like the idea of hip hop, I steal people's paintings. <laughs> so I mean, I only take little bits of say, this part of the face of the whole print or just a hand or something. But your technique feels really Japanese. Is that yeah. something that you've just learned through, through, through practice, through your um, practice? It's just repetition. I mean, for musicians, apparently 20,000 hours of practice and you can become a professional musician. Right. So, I mean, it's the same with pottery. Yeah. The more you make, the better you get and you just have to make and make and make. Wonderful. So you've done, you've, you've, you've done the firing yeah. and then you've done the painting. Yeah. And then does it go in the kiln again? So, I mean, first you paint the blue and yeah. then you with a paintbrush, you paint the glaze on top of only the white place. Yeah. And you latex these, mm -hmm. so the glaze doesn't go on. Mm -hmm. And then you take the latex off after you've done the clear glaze. Oh, wonderful. And then you put latex around here and paint on these colors. So you're masking areas. Yeah. So you're working in reverse sometimes, yeah. really. Yeah, no, And then once that has fired, then you put the red on. So you paint the pot with a cow glue, so the red enamel sticks on, and the enamel's got cow glue in as well, so they all stick on, and then you put it in the kiln and fire it up to, I think it's 790 degrees. Fantastic. Whereas the first firing's 1300. So, so they go in three times, really? Yeah, three yeah, times. Wonderful. Well, that's just a brief taster of what you've got on show here at the Vivian, and we're uh, so excited to have you. Yeah. It was a terrific opening last night, Aaron, and uh, thanks so much for supporting yeah. the Vivian. Thanks Real pleasure to have you, my friend.